Welcome back, welcome back. You tuned in with Maniac. This is the Maniac Entertainment. While y'all tuned in with Maniac Entertainment, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We try my best to bring y'all great content almost on a daily basis, but for sure, we upload two, three videos a week. Trying to squeeze out as much content available. And we, you know, we learn how we at it. You know, we're learning a couple things how we at it too. So, we finna hop right into this great video right here. This video here is the honor student caught stealing seven point five million dollars. And I kind of started it. I started it already. I ain't gonna lie. And this, this got so crazy. I was like, you know what? I gotta record it. This is probably going to be like the longest reaction video I recorded, but I had to put my reaction in on this one because this is just crazy. So, let's just hop right into it. I'm here to tell you that these are criminals that we have never seen before. Living off of stolen money and their victims can be left ruined. And I didn't have other millions of dollars. That was my million dollars. What's up guys, it's at zero here. That was my Joel Ortiz dollars. is a kid that, from the outside, had every- Like, you know you stole everything he had when he said, that was mine, like, that was it. ...thing going for him. He had just graduated at- I'm gonna do as less, I'm trying to do as few as cuts on this video as possible, because this video is pretty long, it's 43 minutes and 43 seconds, so we just gonna react straight to- as valedictorian from a college preparatory school and was given a full ride at UMass Boston to study computer science. He was expected to do great I things, but I don't think anyone imagined that he would turn his prowess to stealing and extorting millions of dollars through a cyber attack that had never been seen before. Yet, during his first year of university, that's exactly what he did. Overnight, Joel went from living... I'm gonna let y'all... I'm gonna let y'all see me react to this one. ...in Boston public housing to the life of a billionaire's son. Luxury cars, private jets, bottle service. He was seemingly invincible. While his victims were left in ruins, he was bragging about it on social media with no fears of being caught. But people don't break into this on social media... Is that a... Is that Gucci? Yeah, with no... That is Gucci. I thought that said... F I thought that said Fucci at first, but it's really Gucci fears of being caught but people don't break into this type of hacking overnight there is a series of events that seem to have led joel down this path and it all started when he was still in high school joel grew up in boston massachusetts his mother was an immigrant from puerto rico she's also 100 percent disabled with a i gotta test out my autofocus okay Okay, we're just making sure. All our equipment work over here. Back injury, father was never in the picture. Joel grew up very poor, um, had no friends. I normally would be doing the headphone thing, but uh, man, I get tired of wearing headphones, so I'm gonna just go straight monitor, microphone. Made all his friends on the internet, including probably the folks that got him involved in this case as well. What we're about to explore is just the fumblings of a young teenager, learning to cheat and exploit and video blunt. games. But it helps us understand how he arrived at committing his later, much more serious crimes. From the beginning, he was clearly a very savvy kid. He's just shy of 13 when this video gets posted by a friend. And as you see, I'm not the I'm host, but my friend Joel, he's the host. It's an advertisement for a Call of Duty cheat lobby Joel had set up and they're charging people to access it. $20 PSN card or PayPal. This friend seems to have influenced Joel to post his own video since one day later that's exactly what happened and remarkably this kickstarted Joel documenting himself falling deeper and deeper into these CD online communities over the next six years. That's Taking a peek at his early videos up until late 2013. You know, hacking is a gateway hack. You know, at least teen, he's hacks. posting more about modding, bug abuse, and hacking in the games he's playing. At one point, he even created another channel, and it's much of the same. Here's the thing. A ton of kids were into this stuff back then, but they didn't all go on to steal millions of dollars. There's something deeper here. 
What's going on ladies and gentlemen, this is WT after 6 a.m. Maka. Joelle is showing people how to upload gameplay footage from their PS4 to YouTube via this workaround that utilized Facebook. But uh, basically what you want to do now is basically save the video. Smart kids. And man. pop. I'm not gonna lie, that'd be the problem man. These kids be too smart man. Not too smart in a bad way, but y'all gotta, gotta really coax them on how to use this knowledge the right way because... I ain't gonna lie, I was there those days. I used to unlock iPhones. Anybody that know me will tell you, I used to unlock 3G and 3GSs back then and sell them on eBay, and I made crazy cash. But it was nothing illegal about it. I purchased them from the people who were selling their iPhones, and I just unlocked them myself using Ultra Snow, Red Snow. Anybody that knows about the Snow City of you know i'm not bullshitting but yeah pause see those folders there's one called hacking stuff just gotta put that knowledge to good use Ooh, proof he's a lead hacker man no see with respect to the call of duty mods he would often feature on his Dude, he had a pause call hacker see those stuff. folders so you got backup backup videos for you to gfx folder m bar more stuff hacking folder COD, cod ghost edit he got a folder with just his name, Joel. Well, that's the system folder. Adobe 4. Don't bother. Why is there a folder called Don't Bother? There's one called Hacking Stuff. Ooh, proof he's a lead hacker man. No. See, with respect to the Call of Duty mods he would often feature on his channel, like, Joel was just a young teenager. He wasn't programming them, he was downloading them, likely to this folder, and then following tutorials on how to set them up. But from where did these downloads come from in the first place? Well, in multiple videos, he shows his web browser and there's always this forum he has favored it called Next Gen Update. Many of his videos even have it linked in the description. This forum has been closed for a number of years now, but it was one of the biggest communities for sharing cheats, exploits, and bugs in console games. But alongside that, there was something more sinister. For some reason, much of video game cheating is linked with actual hacking communities, and on this forum, there was sections for actual computer hacking. Just taking a peek at the archive of the website, people are posting remote administration tools, which are used to secretly take control of someone else's computer, teaching about SQL injection, account- And, and this is all on ClearNet. This is all on front web. That's the craziest part about it. They weren't trying to hide it. It wasn't meant to be hidden, it was just meant to be shown. Well, it was, this is, this is what they were studying. Forget school, I want to study how to hack other people accounts. Account cracking, phishing, encrypting malware. I mean, all of the foundations to get into online fraud. But then at the same time, you've got this more innocent side where kids are posting tips and tricks to get around security permissions on school computers that run video games. And well, Joel is getting interested in all of it. Before they were ever criminals, before they had any criminal thought in their mind, they were just playing games together. Some as early as 12 years old. By 2013, Joel is well into his freshman year of high school. By all accounts, he's wow. a quiet kid, yet by night, he has this explosive man. online life. Rosa, you're new! How you know it's It turns out his main social outlet is Next Gen Update. By this time, he's among the most active users, having made over 4,000 posts, and was even trusted with a moderator position that eventually turned into an administrator position. Joel was like a god on this website, but his interest in hacking is starting to break outside of just games, partly because he's idolizing figures like George Hotz, hackers by the most original sense of the word. I'm not gonna lie, if you don't know about Geo Hots, they probably just not in my age range. But Geo Hots, he, he's younger than me, but man, this guy, man, first got a first got a unlock iPhone. So yeah, he he pretty much set my life in order for a while, from 16 to 17 years old. Man, I made crazy cash. He's only about a little bit younger than me, but. I made crazy cash thanks to the exploits that he was able to put out to unlock iPhones from AT&T to any carrier. Whoo! Unscripted, this is real talk. Made money off of that. 
But the whole PlayStation thing, I had nothing to do with that. I don't even think I had a PlayStation at the time. Like when, when, when the new generation came out for me, when it switched from PlayStation Two and all that stuff, and original Xbox. When it, when the new generation came out, it was 360 versus PlayStation Three. I had an Xbox 360 first. I didn't even have a PlayStation Three. My little brother had a PlayStation Three. I had a 360, and the first game I ever had on 360 was Saints Row. So, I really wasn't into the whole PlayStation 1 next thing. My little brother was, though. He could do it. But I really didn't understand it. And I wasn't into homebrewing anyway. It's Geo High. And for those that don't know, I'm getting sued by Sony. George Hotz, a.k.a. Geo Hot, is a 21-year-old hacker from New Jersey. And he was the first person to jailbreak an iPhone. We'll be releasing the method in a week. Hopefully it'll be a software unlock by then. And last month, yes, he, he was, was the first one to fully hack the PS3 console. Yes, Those that can't do bring suits, cry to your Uncle Sam to settle I mean, disputes. Yeah. He released this code online along with a how-to video. Be. And Joel is really glorifying this, condemning what he had been doing up to this point. Quote, exploiters are not hackers. Modders are not hackers. Hackers crack their way into a system personally with no program. And that is absolutely true right there. That's crazy. Now, this brings me to the point of how is he a hacker or how are we hackers when we didn't exploit your open system? We exploited something that we purchased. After I make a purchase of something, uh, a car, a dirt bike, uh, a video game console, if I choose to install something into my console that was not approved by you, why is that any of your business? I paid you for it, so I should be able to do what I want to do with my product. And that, I believe, was the argument that GeoHots was having. That it's, I'm not a hacker when I didn't hack anything of yours. I hacked my own stuff, so it makes no sense. And if I put out the exploits for other people to do it, I mean, why can't other people do this to their own console? Why I gotta have my console the way y'all set it up? I can't have it the way I want it set up? That's crazy. I pay for it. Exhibit this in the courtroom. Go on, do it, I dare you. Joel wanted to be that guy because right now he was a skid, someone who downloads programs like Call of Duty hacks without any of the knowledge or capability to create their own. To be called a skid is an insult. And well, Joel was determined to not be one, so it's at this point, 16 years old, that he starts teaching himself everything he needs to know. And it's like the more he learns, and that's the, the crazy worse part, stuff. Because once they consider him to be a skid, it's like, all right. If you guys are just going to say, I'm just a kid that sit up here and download stuff and other people exploits, then yeah, that's going to make him want to turn it up to, I'm going to create an exploit that, you know, rivals the level of what GeoHots and everyone else was doing at the time, which was just trying to get your name in hacker infamy anonymously, you know he seems to get himself into. It started out super innocent. Dudes bypassing some user permissions to run COD 4 on a school computer. But then he starts learning how to code, creates a little website. And there's one thing I want to point out to you here. He has this email register, treyarch at fbi.al. It's a fake FBI domain. Dude was impersonating the FBI. But more importantly, it's a nod to the fact that he was influenced by this childish hacker culture that existed on these forums where certain things were done it's not boldly hard to, to impress. Your own, um, your own app. I mean, you can even do that on dark web. You can simulate, emulate any app you want at AOL.com on, on dark web. You can do that. And that's not that impressive to say. At FBI. AI, you could put at FBI.com if you wanted to. You can create that. And while with his skills advancing, that can quickly become a dangerous combination. And this kind of comes into full effect by late 2014. He's bragging about an exploit he's found in mail.com, allowing him to gain unauthorized access to people's accounts. Most people wouldn't post on Twitter that they're stealing email accounts. 
but maybe it's because to a young teen whose entire social life is seemingly these forms, well, it's an echo chamber. Cybercrime was glorified, something to be celebrated, and well, things were about to get a whole lot worse. That was really sad. Pretty to far. have been kind of walking alongside Joel for a couple of years and to really see how hard he had been working. I can't live in his mind and I can't answer for him. I'm not a young Latino boy that doesn't have a dime. So why he did it, I'm not sure. Does he regret it? I absolutely know. He's very aware that his actions have not made a positive influence in the world. It's 2016 and Joel is in his last year of high school, really excelling academically, head of the robotics team, teaching other students how to program, and waiting to hear back from UMass Boston about his application to study computer science. But at the same time, his nighttime hobby of posting video game content had gone dark. Something else was grabbing his attention. And that's because just a couple months before he was set to graduate, Joel had seen a video, liked it so much he even added it to his favorites, and it was about to change the course of his life forever. Tell us how you get the OG name. Oh yeah, okay. So there's this guy by the name of, here, let me link you. No, but he charges over a thousand, like. I'm not gonna lie, my whole watermark is covering up rice gum. If anybody knows rice gum, then you should know that's his voice talking, but. Uh... Rice Gum is pretty much just explaining how he purchased his at name from this hacker here that they're covering Joel and it'll go on. But just to let you guys know, that is Rice Gum that's being covered up right here. Let me show you. I'm trying to put this over here, right? Just for a brief moment. Let's sit this over here. If you want an OG ad, it's like a thousand or two thousand, but he, but he just sold me rice for really cheap, but his shit is like really expensive, so. Clearly have rice, right? I and that's crazy, because you would think that, I mean, that's hard, that's a hard name to like, come across, because obviously the most common names would have be, have took, be taken already, but, yeah, Rice Gum is saying how he purchased the, the ad name for $30, I think? Probably, no, 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 somebody donated him three to ten. I think he, he, the guy sells him at a thousand dollars, though. Clearly have it. Like, to get these exclusive at names, you have to pull a lot of strings. I'm here, I can show you all the at names he has. Yo, he told me not to show. Damn. The at will get banned if you show them. Okay, okay, I won't. Relax, relax, relax. Yo, hey, my bad again, homie, uh, the guy that sells ads, my bad. I don't know, like, am I supposed to say uh, your name or whatever? I don't know, but sorry for almost exposing your shit, you feel me? I didn't know, I didn't know, man. Damn, he would have hacked me shit if I fucked him up. I think it was at this damn. point that Joel realized there was he a- He would have hacked me if I fucked him up, so, damn. Why would you buy an account from somebody who could have- access to your account at any time that don't make no damn sense but yeah rice gummit made it right there that his at name was purchased and that guy right there sold it to him and he sells a bunch of at names for crazy amount of money a lot of money to be made in stealing and selling cool usernames and he was about to graduate about to have an entire summer to make a little change before heading off to college Joel nice. gets to work. Just like the video, he's decided out of all social media, he's going after Instagram, trying to figure out how to get his hands on any username that he wants. This was not a new concept to him. I mean, he had made numerous references. And that's why I say ad names, because he's, he's going at Instagram, you know, everything on Instagram is at such and such and such. But, you know, he, he, I don't really think he did usernames for any other places, but Instagram, and probably Twitter too, but still, he did some crazy stuff, y'all gonna see. The OG usernames over the years because they were a huge part of Xbox and PlayStation culture, especially on sites like Next Gen Update. Short usernames like Cat, Panda, Zero, whatever, are like status symbols to the terminally online. Usually it's people why? e famous who why hold them. E Twitch streamers, YouTubers, pro gamers, About you get the idea. To have one, to some people, is like the online equivalent of wearing a Rolex, and that's why they're worth so much. 
And so at first, he goes back to what he knows. There's this method people often talked about on next gen update called turboing. It was originally made popular for getting Xbox gamer tags. It's a less nefarious hijacking method that uses a program to issue username change requests over and over again, many times a second until the name becomes available. Now, chances are the name someone wants to turbo will never become available because the owner will never change it. So instead, they look for other people selling usernames then enter oh, those wow. into their turboing there software so freaking software that just sits there and wait for you to change your username and when you change it oh you cannot change it back because you know once you i think once you change your username you gotta wait uh two two week period before you can change it again so you have to wait two weeks just to come back and find out whoever got your username took it damn near instantly and it's over you're never getting that back don't change your username to something stupid and think that you're gonna change it back to your original that's not happening when that person makes the sale and attempts to swap the name to the customer's account, well, the person running the turboing software manages to claim it first. They steal the username. Now, here's the thing. Next Gen Update didn't have a market for buying and selling Instagram handles. Sure, Joel tried to sell a few on there, but to really get customers, he had to join a new site, hackforms.net. Joel got so far down that he had to join... Buy Cuzzo. At Cuzzo. OG account, OG email for $50. You could have bought Cuzzo in a new site, hackforms.net. Hey, Joel got so far down this rabbit hole, he himself went from just a user of turboing software to eventually getting involved in the sale of it. Check it out. In this video, he's showcasing how software one of his friends made is faster at claiming Instagram handles than a competing software, and they're selling it for $90 a pop. And Damn. all of this is kind of working out for him. He's making a few dollars and for the first time in his life, he's buying himself nice things like pairs of shoes. You can imagine how good this felt now to the kid who had previously expressed on Twitter how he had to run to school after his bike broke because he had no money to fix it. Joel was clearly very motivated as a kid to escape his situation. He lived just south of Harvard University. He was surrounded by wealth, but he had he lived Joel was clearly very motivated as a kid to escape his situation. He lived just south of Harvard University. He was surrounded by wealth, but he had none of it. Maybe that's what motivated him to try so hard in school. But this new money was coming in fast. Definitely. Sometimes in this community, people refer to it as printing, meaning money is so easy to make with no real work that it's like printing cash. But this wasn't good enough for Joel. Maybe driven by his financially insecure childhood, he wanted more. To him, turboing was unreliable, unpredictable. There was a golden carrot dangling in front of him because the cooler the name, the more it was worth. But these coveted names rarely came up for sale, let alone for sale outside of hack forms, which was a real problem because he couldn't turbo names being sold by other hack form members because they had a rule against that. He would have got banned for scamming. It made the pickings even smaller. He knew if he could just solve the puzzle of hacking into an Instagram account, he could steal any name he wanted and make thousands of dollars for potentially minutes of work. And since getting into this market, he was also making friends with a lot of like-minded people. It's almost cult-like how they go from being little DDoSers to slowly- 14 months before the hack. It's almost cult-like how they go from being little DDoSers to slowly growing into sim swappers where their moral compass just disappears. Like, once they hit a big target and get thousands of dollars, their egos just explode and they turn nasty. True. Joel is staring at an Instagram page that- That's like most of the hackers that ever goes to prison. It, it's like you just elevate from- Like, look at the creator of Silk Road, if anybody knows that story. You create one of the biggest dark websites that sells all illicit- Anything you could think of, any drug you could think of, if you run this website and you run the escrow system of it and you're already making thousands of dollars easily, why would you get involved? 
that he wants to hack and it's like a puzzle. Maybe he could try sending them a message, trick them into clicking some sketchy link, a phishing attack, but no, most of these accounts are long and active. They're never gonna see that message, let alone fall for it. Maybe he could fish someone that works at Instagram, use their admin account to reset the username, but he's not even sure who would have access to that sort of thing. There's many ideas, but Joel is smart. Top of the class, on his way to top of the FBI's most wanted list, <laughs> he lands on an approach. Maybe he could try just recovering the account. Click forgot password. It sends a recovery code to the owner's email, even reveals a few letters of what that email is. If he could fill in the blanks, figure out what the entire address was, maybe he could just hack their email, reset the Instagram account into his control from there. I mean, he already has experience taking over mail.com accounts, right? This is exactly what he sets out to do, but figuring out that email address is proving tricky. It's about making connections. Is there anything on their profile that will fill in the blanks? Maybe a real life name? Does their Instagram lead to any other online profiles that will give it away? He's becoming an online detective of sorts, but it's for Smart nefarious purposes, he's dude. growing more daring. Once he's found a likely email, it's a credential stuffing attack. Joel was a big fan of a now seized website called LeakBase. He was searching these emails on there, and if the person ever had their email leaked in a data breach, which is quite common, it would show him their password. Then he could try to log into their email with it. Do you reuse the same password over and over again? If so, you're wow. vulnerable to this sort of attack and it's probably time to get a password manager. But by early 2017, this is really working out for him. He's getting into people's emails, taking full control of them, stealing all these really good Instagram accounts, ones he would never get from turboing, and he's trying to sell them on Twitter. Joel had That's hit amazing. a little jackpot. These were worth thousands of dollars, but it was a lot of work. Finding accounts that can be hijacked this way is like finding a needle in a haystack. At one point, Joel even tried to get a program made to help him automate this, promising OG names as payment, but one of the- He found two folk. Somebody wanted that number, boy, that two folk. I wonder why they wanted that two folk. Y'all saw that? Look at that. IG handle two folk. Do not release password on Instagram. I have full access on file. Do not attempt to hack me. I have OG email access. Damn. He hijacked this way is like finding a needle in a haystack. At one point, Joel even tried to get a program made to help him automate this, promising OG names as payment, but one of the other admins called him out, quote, you're trying to get a tool made for your jacking shit and it's not going to happen. The Damn, thing is, for Joel, based on what he would go on to do, taking these accounts was likely a rush. To keep getting that high, he was going to have to keep victimizing bigger and bigger targets, which was going to demand a new hack, one that could truly gain access to any account he wanted, but Joel didn't know enough about web hacking to pull this off on his own. But that didn't matter because he was about to run into a group of much more sophisticated individuals. The group of sim swappers called the community. Nine One second, you are not a millionaire. Then within 10 seconds, you instantly have... I'm not gonna lie, they keep talking about the hack. I can't wait to see what the hack is. I don't know. Of $2 million, $3 million. It's like an insane natural high that you're like, whoa. Joel had built up quite the reputation from selling a ton of names on hack forums. So when other people in this market decided to create their own forum in late April of 2017, one specifically to trade rare usernames, well, he gets invited day one, member number 68, to register. It's called OG Users and it's quickly becoming popular. Over 40,000 members would register in the first year alone, and immediately after joining, Joel makes his first post titled Instagram Shop. He has all these crazy handles for sale, charging thousands of dollars, and the comments are praising this saying things like it's the best list of names ever, yeah, questioning yeah. how it was even possible. At He's Gmail. immediately yeah, respected. This put him among a handful of other members who had found ways to obtain yeah, many yeah. rare names and to everyone else, they were like gods got, looked up to. Many kids yeah. wanted to be like them. They thought they were Two, rich. Four, four, and so dollars. naturally, a lot of these- Two, four, four thousand dollars, man. Already big for 500. 103 for some reason. 103 is a hot one for 150. And 43 is a hot one for $1,000.
these revered members become friends with each other. There was this semi-public Discord server where they all hung out. They're playing Minecraft, but everyone has a cool username. They pick up Fortnite and Joel goes and gets the name at dark because he's about to turn to the dark side. But at the same time, they're all into stealing online accounts, so they're scheming new ways to hit bigger and better targets. 2017, we all know what happened then, and that's when all the celebrities start going, that's when Bitcoin starts running, we're in the news, we're everywhere, people are hearing about it. They had just found a new method that allowed them to hack any Instagram account they wanted, and their first target was celebrities. Late August 2017, Selena Gomez has her Instagram account hijacked. With over 125 million followers, she's the most influential person on the platform, literally the biggest target. And the hackers, looking for attention, post unclad photos of Justin Bieber, ridicule his small shrimp, and leave their ads as a claim to fame and bragging rights for the millions. They fucking, they hacked Selena Gomez's account, posted private pictures from her DM of a celebrity himself, Justin Bieber of all people, especially at that time, and then referred to, look at this little shrimpy. Oh, it looked like it said it. And we're. Well, look at this nigga, little shrimpy. And then it got a bunch of laughing, dying emojis. And it says, follow. They were so brazen. It says, follow. We run the scene. Small shrimp and leave their ads as a claim to fame and bragging rights for the millions of people who were about to hear of this stunt as media outlets around the world picked up the story. This was a big deal. Instagram immediately took action. Almost as quickly as they locked her account, they had found the bug responsible. In a press statement, they wrote, quote, one or more individuals obtained unlawful access to a number of high profile Instagram users' contact information, specifically email address and phone number, by exploiting a bug in the Instagram API. No account passwords were exposed. We fixed the bug swiftly and are running a thorough investigation. But this bug was a lot more serious than this sanitized PR messaging led on. In the week prior to Selena, it had been used for something much more sinister. The hackers coded scripts to automate the process of exposing and logging the email and phone numbers to over 6 million accounts, which were now being sold on a newly created website called Doxagram, fresh with an easy to use interface Never charging $10 per search. Where do they advertise this? OG users. And of course, the same day Selena is hacked, Joelle makes a post titled, you can no longer hack celebrities on Instagram with phone or email. He tried to himself and he got this error message. He goes on to tag the OG user member behind the attack, quote, shout out to Isla God and his crew for finally making Instagram fix their stuff. And then kind of surprisingly, just a week later, Joelle posts a new video on his channel. It's showing the bug in action while it still worked, and in the description, he states it was found just seven days before the big incident. Joel clearly had some intimate relations with the people behind this attack to have this sort of insider information, but just having the phone number and email address of Selena's account wasn't enough to actually hack her. Remember, Instagram said no passwords were exposed in the breach. This group was relying on another tactic, one that would have much bigger implications. <laughs> Zero months before that. Wes says most of these young thieves started out hacking Instagram accounts of celebrities like Jennifer Lawrence and Selena Gomez. But Wes says the hackers soon realized they could make real money using the same techniques to steal cryptocurrency. While Joel had been toiling in the weeds of leaked databases looking for passwords, his new friends were up to something a little easier. Sim swapping. Sim swapping is a new way for crooks to essentially take over a victim's cell phone while they're sleeping. By getting control of their victim SIM, they're getting all of their text messages. They could just reset the damn password to whatever they wanted. And think about how easy this is. If somebody takes over your phone, all these folks have to do is use your email address to try to log on to these accounts and then say, forgot password. So then the, the password reset is sent to your text, which is now controlled by another phone that you don't have. And they reset the passwords, and now they have complete control over getting into all of your accounts. Whoa, this is scary stuff. Really but surely scary. it wasn't so easy. 
That's right? Crazy. Back then, you know, sim swapping was fairly easy. That's Joseph Harris. In 2015, he was raided by police after hijacking an Instagram car page that had over 3 million followers. He received a misdemeanor charge and was released on a $500 bail. Undeterred, he had fallen deeper and deeper into online fraud. Fast forward to now, he had become one of Joel's close friends. I have a burner Android phone that cost me 20, 30 bucks that I ordered off eBay or some site or got off Craigslist. I have a uh, SIM card that I just paid and bought online from eBay or some reseller. Um, I'm calling up AT&T. Hey, you know, I just got a new cell phone. I have a new SIM card. I'm trying to activate my device on that SIM card. And they'd say, okay, well, what's your name? You'd say it. Then they'd ask for your last four social security number. You'd give it to them and you can buy basically almost anyone's social security number off the dark web for like three bucks and they'll just Sound activate the device for you and now i have the phone in my hand and i'm going on gmail.com and i'm typing in the person's email and then i see a phone option i'm typing in that phone number and i'm getting a text directly to that phone in my hand reading off that code typing it in my web browser resetting that person's email password so this was it the hack that could get into any account they wanted but you don't make millions of dollars sim swapping high value instagram accounts Accounts. Something else had been brewing in the background. When 2017 started, Bitcoin was trading just below $1,000, up from the usual six to 700 range. The value of a Bitcoin jumping to almost, very briefly, 20,000 this week. Bitcoin's value had grown 10 times from the start of the year. And then less than two weeks later, it almost doubled again. Almost overnight, there were dozens of newly minted crypto millionaires. And being unreversible, it had long been the currency of choice when selling usernames because unlike PayPal, there was no way for the buyer to claw the money back. Super important when you're dealing with a bunch of online fraudsters. So when Bitcoin was making this historic bull run, Joel and friends realized they can apply all the same techniques they had been using to take over Instagram accounts to stealing from large crypto holders. For 35 years, Seth Shapiro and his wife Anne-Marie Michaels worked in the world of media technology, crimping and saving to provide a future for their two children. I looked down at my um, phone and I saw it suddenly go dead. Within minutes, the thieves had all the information contained on Shapiro's phone, including access to nearly $2 million in cryptocurrency, which had been stored in an electronic wallet probably the worst moment of my life. I just kind of sat there in a store helpless knowing that everything we had was gone. Late 2017, early 2018, all these attacks are happening nonstop, but no one knows who's behind it. I was at home at my desk and I noticed a notification for a withdrawal request. And I thought that's weird. I didn't make a withdrawal request. And then I looked back at my phone and I saw that I had no service. One million dollars, an overwhelming majority of Ross's life savings and the money for his daughter's education was all gone in less than one hour. They're targeting Damn. CEOs of crypto startups, speakers at crypto events, people sharing a little too much on Bitcoin forums. They were like modern day pirates, but instead of atoms, they were stealing bits, ones and zeros flowing across wires worth millions of dollars. But those ones and zeros belonged to dozens and dozens of real people, real victims that desperately wanted justice. Yet, despite this having gone on for months, no one had been caught. I've run to the house while trying not to vomit at the same time. How could this be? I'm using Authenticator. Everything should be safe, right? Notifications of password bypasses and successful SMS workarounds on various accounts started popping up on my phone. And then another, and then another email account was compromised. And yet again, my exchange accounts. They had my phone. Maybe they felt a little invincible. This group had successfully sim swapped their way into becoming multi-millionaires. And they were about to live like it. That's just the craziest shit ever. They're dumping $1,500 bottles of champagne over $50,000 watches. They cloned phones by just calling in a phone company with a new SIM card. Last four digits of a social and some other shit that they probably ain't even gonna go into full details of. It's an intellectual crime right there, but man, these dudes hit for millions off of one person. 
and still kept going. Like, how you hit for millions and then hit for 50,000 and then hit for 20,000 and turn around and hit for 300,000 and hit for another 3 million? And man, they were just going crazy. A group of sim swappers called the community. They are flagrant, they're obnoxious, they have common things that show their wealth and they flaunt them. What's up, guys? It's at zero here. Having come from nothing, Joel was celebrating his freshly stolen millions. He wasn't the poor kid anymore and now he wanted to be like a big shot Instagram motivational influencer, showing off his lavish lifestyle on his two newly acquired accounts at zero on Instagram and at zero on Twitter. He apparently paid $40,000 for them. And his friends are all doing the same thing. This was kind of their opportunity to impress people. They're flashing huge wads of cash, showing off designer watches, buying whatever they thought would make them look good. Probably the most bold of them all was Xavier, one of Joel's close friends and fellow sim swapper. Dude was a year younger than Joel, just 19 at this point, and he had purchased himself a McLaren 720S. Oh, We're talking a $300,000 car that he bought with stolen Bitcoin. And he's showing all of this on his Instagram account at Game Room. This was becoming part of sim swapper culture. People between the ages of 13 and 25 who are living in their mom's basement, existing off Uber Eats, never leaving their homes, and all of a sudden, they're instant millionaires. It's the Bitcoin bandit. I've been in the kitchen, wrist twisting like a trick shot. Most you rappers got no bars like a sim swap. Songs written by people in the community even started to come out. I just spent your whole rent check on a wristwatch. 1080 Ti in my system, yeah. I make your T-Mobile go missing. Check on a wristwatch. 1080 Ti. That boy got 20 and t Yo. This boy got two 1080 Ti's and SLI. Real in his system. And you know that's him rapper because he just referenced it. The watch and all, like, he is rapping about this. And they ain't gonna say, you dudes got no bars like a sim swap? I ain't gonna lie, dead ass one of the hardest songs. Cause he's speaking the truth. I in my system, yeah. I make your team mobile go missing, yeah. I hear respect in these women, yeah. She tell me her promise, I listen. I just pulled up an F4, made 50 k off extortion. My Twitter, you couldn't afford it. Having stolen millions of dollars. My Twitter, you couldn't afford it. Hey, he ain't lying. His Twitter was forty thousand dollars for that handle. You could not afford it. I would not pay for it if I had it. He was now making his childhood dreams come true. He always wanted to go to this music festival called Ultra. And now, early 2018, he's enrolled in his second year of university, studying computer science at UMass Boston on a full ride scholarship. And he's posting on OG users to see if anyone wants to come with him to Ultra during his spring break. And apparently, when he went, he had a great time, even planned to go back next year. It really seemed that he had no idea any of this would ever come back. Back to him and with summer break fast approaching he was planning his biggest trip yet an entire month in la to celebrate xavier's birthday but that was going to cost a ton of money and at this time crypto was falling in price drastically from its 2017 high every day joel would be watching as his millions drop by tens of thousands of dollars and i think this drove him to be a little more brazen in pursuit of sim swapping more money to keep up with this ostentatious lifestyle because it's at this point Joel and his group targets another high profile crypto investor. Except this time, after taking over the guy's email and cryptocurrency accounts. Just want to take this quick break to say. Gotta go subscribe to Maniac Entertainment. Drop your comments. Like the video if you like the content. We always try to bring fresh content, something new, every week. Whether it's for dunk racing, we react to everything. But if you would like to personally see something you like to react to, just drop it in the comments. Back to this video. They get a little more daring. 
They call the investor's wife. Of course she picks up, thinks it's her husband. The call's coming from his number after all, but it's these fraudsters demanding she gets her husband to send them more Bitcoin. And when that doesn't work, they start texting his daughter. You can mess with a man's money, but his daughter and wife, well, it got real personal. Instead of going to a local police station where they'd have no idea what cryptocurrency was, let alone how to trade. I ain't gonna lie, that's real life extortion right there, real shit. Like, nah, you, nah, I understand you say maybe 50 k off extortion. I was like, maybe that's the only thing he capping about because he ain't really extort nobody. But this is extortion for real, for real. At this point, you hit up this man's wife. And daughter and said, tell your dad send more money, like, or what? Like, damn, he probably went to them. When he, the dude probably did say, or what? And he probably went on to text the wife and daughter, like, yo, we know everything about you, yada, yada, yada. And that's, that's just crazy, man. That's extortion. Face an unknown hacker. He went to a specialized task force known as React that focuses exclusively on cybercrime. But it was going to take a little while for them to run an investigation. And in the meantime, Joel was going to make a few more mistakes. Late May, heading into June, Joel, Xavier, and a bunch of other fraudsters had made it to LA. They're renting a $150,000 a month Airbnb in the Hollywood Hills throwing parties, going to a ton of concerts in the Hollywood Hill. They're renting a $150,000. $150,000 a month. Damn, I hope they only had that for half a month or something. Dollar a month, Airbnb in the Hollywood Hills, throwing parties, know, like that. going to a ton of concerts, it's like every 20 year old's infinite money dream after seeing Wolf of Wall Street. And in the midst of completely devoting themselves to hedonistic activities, this is when they get the first sign their worlds are soon to come crashing down. Joel makes a post on OG users titled, FBI is doing investigations. He writes, I don't know why they were looking into me. I'm just assuming Instagram accounts I was selling or I don't know. But I think he did know. This subpoena request was made by the FBI, asking Apple to give up all information relating to his account. Wow. And the date of the request shows it was made just weeks after the Selena hack. It seems they had been onto him for months before this most recent report to react. And the news just kept getting worse. Two weeks later, there's chatter on Twitter that Xavier is going to be arrested. It seems he... crossed the wrong person who knew who he was, knew what he had done, and got people to tweet this. Some of them literally tagging the FBI. It's hard to say how they were feeling at this time. Maybe Joel That's thought crazy, since he hadn't been arrested yet, they hadn't found anything real. incriminating. Or maybe he knew it was coming and decided to live it up while he still could. Either way, the entire point of being in LA was for Xavier's birthday, and that was just six days away. They pull up to the Hyde Sunset Club in Los Angeles, and they're posting all these crazy videos to social media. They've paid the club for a special birthday celebration. They're holding up signs, spelling out their names, standing around in circles, pouring out $200 bottles of Dom Perignon champagne. Like even Vitaly is there for some ungodly reason. But all of this boasting was attracting a lot of attention, and this is when the tables get turned. That night, they were held up at gunpoint by armed robbers, oh, wow. and the next morning, Joel live streamed about it. What's up, guys? Uh, Sat Zero here. I'm gonna be making a little live stream about what happened yesterday. Two guys came into the house with guns and pointed at me and my friends. It's crazy. I was so scared. Like, it was literally what was supposed to be about to pull the trigger on me. I'm so bad. I'm lucky I'm alive. They stole like over $40,000 worth of I had like $8,000 cash and a uh, Rolex and a Bitcoin chain. They stole a bunch of iPhones and uh, some of the jewelry that I lost. I could just buy that back. Back then, someone was like pointing a gun at me. It was just like, it really, like, it's just, it's 
screwed my mind over. Like, I'm just trying to, like, go back to Boston. So now, having become the victim of theft himself, what does he do? He reports it to the Hollywood division of the Los Angeles Police Department. Really? Even though everything stolen from him... Every... Say it. ...was bought in with ill-gotten gain. Everything stolen from him, he stole from somebody. And then want to report it to the police. Like, you literally had a Rolex stolen that you probably bought with Bitcoins that was stolen. You had a Bitcoin chain that you probably bought with Bitcoins that was stolen. And you only had $8,000 in cash. Like, everything else they got, they got to literally liquidate. They get it turned to cash. Like, that's crazy, man. Then you're going to report it. Like, you can't just, like, you just said it yourself in the video. Oh, I can get it all back. Then why would you report it to the police? Like, you just put in your... <sighs> talk about now nah, it's gonna be like how did you get it being brazen but that wasn't the mistake he made that would ultimately lead to his downfall ironically while joelle and other sim swappers were scouring the internet for At personal zero. information on crypto investors like dark, law enforcement was doing the same to try and find them these bad guys were making millions of dollars but making real try react is Regional Enforcement Allied Computer Team. So, just know, anybody out there doing computer crimes? Yeah. It ain't the FBI. Well, it might be the FBI, too. FBI, well, teams. But, yeah, you got to react now. For all that EDD, PPP, uh, tax, and all that other stuff. Yeah, these people is getting foot prints digital footprints of everything you do and find them these bad guys were making millions of dollars but making rookie mistakes joelle obviously wasn't being super secretive online and i don't just mean the flashy instagram post if caught he had basically documented the entire thing he was posting videos of all these different web hacks they were finding that helped them commit their fraud Exploits that let them break into less secure emails. Data leaks on big telecommunication providers like T-Mobile that they abuse to get private customer information. Heck, on multiple occasions, he's complaining the website they used to buy social security numbers was down. At one point, he was even asking about how to reduce his tax on stolen crypto. Quote, it's my first time trying to pay my taxes. Maybe a stark reminder that Joel was just a young adult after That's all. Wild. But this would be his fatal mistake. Wait, wait, wait. Joel I use Bitcoin tax, but I'm uncertain what percentage rate I should use. I'm from USA. Anyone here is paying their taxes? I don't think there is taxes on Bitcoins. Bitcoins is a decentralized currency. Who do you pay your taxes on Bitcoins to? He was just a young adult after all, but this would be his. I did a Bitcoin investment. fatal mistake. He writes, I did Bitcoin to USD on Coinbase, 30k plus, so obviously IRS will see this. Except it wasn't the IRS who would find this. It would be Sammy Chirazi, sergeant and an investigator on the React task force. So you remember that guy who Joel harassed the wife and daughter? Okay, so he transferred 30,000 from Bitcoin to, to US dollars. So he actually got 30,000 US dollars. And now he fears that the IRS will see that and they would want to know where would he get this type of money in Bitcoins from. Which is easily explainable. Throw the boom. Daughter of just two months before flying to LA. Turns out he only made off with $10,000 of his money, one of his least successful heist. Yet, just days after that victim went to react, they knew exactly who he was. We just started looking at the phone records of who took over the phone. And we see that the victim's cell phone was in San Jose area. Then when it switches, it goes right to Boston, just south of Harvard. We figured it out, it was an Android based wow. phone and we sent off warrants to Google to ask for whatever data they had that correlates to that number of the phone that the bad guy was using. We get a guy named Joel Ortiz's email address. We got his whole account with all the emails he's ever sent and received. And within those emails, we see 
a picture of him holding up his driver's license. To sell on Coinbase, Joel had to verify his identity and this was how. They also found emails from YouTube, confirmations of all those videos he had uploaded. In addition, they asked AT&T for any and all accounts linked to Joel's phone at any point between November 2017 and June 2018. They found approximately 40 numbers, oh, all potential God victims. Damn. So what do they do? They start ringing them up and it's the same story every time. Their phone went dead, crypto was stolen, if they had any. So now they've got a ton of statements, but these guys don't make arrest immediately. They love to sit, watching, waiting, collecting evidence to ensure they get a strong conviction. So there will be no doubt once they finally do make the arrest that the bad guy will be found guilty, will go to jail. Except that was about to be cut short because after the robbery, Joel was shaken up. He posted to Instagram that he was leaving LA, heading back to Boston to then fly to Belgium to go to a concert but they were worried if he left the country, he would never come back. The race was on to catch him before he got away with millions in stolen crypto. We were working with the Los Angeles airport police and we figured out which flight he was gonna be on and which terminal he was gonna have to go through. Then we decided yeah. it'd probably be best to get him after he walks through the metal detector, you know, puts all his luggage went, down yeah, and puts all the stuff in the awesome. bucket. And me and Caleb just walked up as he was walking through the metal detector and we have our badges out. We arrested him at the airport on his way back to Boston. Just as he was about to board a plane at LAX, decked out in Gucci gear and carrying wads of cash. Joel was the first person ever arrested for sim swapping. He was charged with 41 counts, including grand theft, identity theft, and assorted computer crimes. But now they had to figure out where the money was. We were sentencing a hacker who was relatively young but who had committed a very sophisticated crime very and that had caused so much damage. By any standard, this is a remarkable case. The amount stolen was greater than the original value of the uh, great train robbery. I think all sim swap victims who have lost money are watching this Joel Ortiz trial and certainly the sim swappers are watching it to see how much time he will end up having to serve. We lost everything. I'm 50 years old with two small children, and I I'm facing no retirement. Mm. Because Joel Ortiz and one day destroyed our lives. Everything we spent decades building. Joel pleaded no contest to his charges. In effect, it was a guilty plea. At 21 years old, he was sentenced to 10 years in prison for stealing $7 million. But prosecutors have failed to get him to reveal the location of Bitcoin they suspect he's hidden. Joel is arrested at LAX. And what he has with him that's super important in this case is he has a ledger. And a ledger is almost like a thumb drive that holds cryptocurrency. He gave him a password and they recovered $300,000. I had conversations with Joel and told him that we could be more lenient if he were to tell us where the rest of this money was. We know that he didn't get all of the money that he stole. He split it with his partners, but there was a significant amount of money missing. Today, Joel is in Sentinella State Prison. If they're right, he will be coming home in 2028 at 30 years old to millions of dollars. Me personally, I think he gave it all up. When I was talking to him, he said he had about a mil left. Crypto obviously tanked around that time too, so it makes sense for it to be about three times less than what it had been when I talked with him last. It shouldn't have been 10 years, and not even close. Dennis Dawson represents Joel Ortiz. Dawson says his client got a harsh deal for a non-violent offense because Dawson says the court system wants to make an example of Ortiz. And Joel was a kid, he was 19 and 20. They do things to impress their friends. But Seth Shapiro and Anne Marie <laughs> Michaels say 10 years is not enough. Authorities only recovered about $75,000 of their stolen money. Mr. Ortiz, I'm so sorry. You'll be sitting in prison instead of using your incredible talents for something productive in your college years, your growing years, your 20s. But you know what? I hope you grow from this and rejoin society and benefit the world. Find your soul in this time and God bless you in your new journey. Sincerely, your nameless, faceless victim, Jeremiah Nickel.
As for his friends, five others were captured and charged in connection with the scheme. Calvin Ung stole $1.5 million and was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Nicholas Truglia stole $22 million and was sentenced to 18 months in prison. Ricky was ordered to pay restitution of $7.7 .7 million and sentenced to 48 months in prison. Xavier is suspected of having stolen over $1 million. He was previously granted supervised release, but the actual outcome of his case remains private, either due to his age or some deal he made with the prosecutors. And finally, Joseph Harris, charged with stealing $14 million from the San Jose-based tech firm Crowd Machine. He returned all the money, was sentenced to 16 months in prison, and got out early 2020. He has since turned his prowess to ethical hacking, reporting exploits for pay to companies through their bug bounty programs instead of abusing them. I mean, Joe had a rough upbringing in some regards, but he was kind to us as friends and I feel he got mixed up in the wrong world, like a lot of us did. But at the same time, the victims are also real people too. The high from gaining millions of dollars in minutes is insane, so imagine how the low of losing it in minutes feels. So while we were young and made mistakes, stealing millions from people still is a horrendous thing to do. I needed jail and time away from the world to truly realize how bad it was. But these arrests were just the tip of the iceberg. While sim swapping isn't nearly as easy as it once was, it's a bigger problem today than ever. It seems like every week there is a new way that hackers are convincing the telephone companies to change sims. Ultimately, it's always going to come down to human failures at large corporations. If you can trick, bribe, or convince someone to, to do something some bad, that's where the liability lies, and they should be held accountable. There's not much we can do to protect ourselves from the sim swap happening. What we can do is protect ourselves from the damage that these crooks can do once they have control of our accounts. Every account that you have is going to ask you for some sort of recovery, and what you don't want to use is your telephone. These guys have made it look real glamorous, influencing countless fraudsters to come. But those are stories for another that day. Smart, Anyways, smart. guys, thanks for watching this. This is Joel, and I'm out. Peace. That's crazy. Man, that, I just find that whole story to be wild. Man, I did not know e I mean, sim swapping was a thing. I wonder if the eSIM would eradicate that problem, but... Yeah, for them to just get a sim, call up the phone company, and he was saying, um, he was saying T-Mobile specifically, but to swap out your T-Mobile sim and to say, oh, this was my number, and this is just my name, and they give you that person's information, you could do whatever you want with it. What? I'm talking with the emails and everything. How is that even possible? How? I mean, I can't say how they did it, but I want to thank you guys for tuning in, man. It's another episode of Maniac Entertainment. Maniac. Maniac. I just watched a nice, crazy story on the horrors of student, the honor student caught stealing $7.5 million. I mean, his friend stole $22 million. This story really should be about him, but until the next story, man, you guys leave your comments and subscribe to Maniac Entertainment because we bring this to you like this everywhere. We're going to have something fresh. We're going to have something new up here. We can guarantee that. We've been Maniac, we're signing out this.